All right, everyone, thanks so much for joining us for our pre-first round media availability here in Indianapolis. Uh, we will begin with Coach Kruger, followed by Austin Reeves. If you guys have a question for Coach Kruger, you can put that in the chat uh, because we do have a combination of locals from Oklahoma, Missouri, and some national media members. When you make that request, if you don't mind putting your affiliate as well. Um, and with that being said, let's start off with Ryan Aber, the Oklahoman. Hey, Ben, a quick question before we get started. Can we get record permission? That would be useful, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll let, uh, Ryan, if you want to fire away with the first question, I'll, uh, I'll start granting record permission to whoever needs it. You guys okay. can just put that in the chat. Hey, Lon, I wanted to ask you about uh, Davion Harmon. Uh, it, it seems like he's, uh, you know, with the, outside, with the exception of that uh, last game when he didn't shoot much, has been one of your most consistent shooters, offensive production guys recently. Uh, how do you feel about he stand? about the way he stands entering this tournament and just how important is he to, to what y'all need to do offensively? Yeah. Ironic. Uh, first question, uh, Davion tested positive. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. So, uh, we'll be without Davion, you know, uh, just, uh, going through a, a year. He's had a great year, uh, made tremendous progress. Uh, you know, players, you know, have this as a goal to play in the NCAA tournament. And it is so sad. And uh, for Davion, you know, just uh, heartbroken that he's not going to have that opportunity this first weekend. So uh, he challenged our guys to go win a couple, I guess, so we can get back for the second weekend. But uh, a lot of work ahead for that, for sure. But, uh, yeah, just this disappointed for Davion that, that he won't be with us. Well, given that, uh, you know, it, how do you replace that production? Uh, and, uh, you know, how does that change your, your plan uh, going into the Missouri game, and how is how is he handling that news? Well, he's disappointed, of course, and uh, yet he's in quarantine now, so you know no one sees him, or you know that's another tough uh, tough 10, 11 days for him uh, as well. But as we've done on other occasions, uh, other guys have to step up. You know, we've had uh, two or three other occasions where we've been without players, and and guys uh, have had to, uh, needed to respond, and uh, they they get it. It's COVID, and uh, we've got uh, that challenge again before it's uh, for Saturday. Uh, Missouri is very good, and uh, we've got other guys step up and, and replace uh, uh, Davion's uh, minutes and points and rebounds and all that. Do you know who you're going to start in that spot yet? No, for sure. No, it'll be a combination of, uh, you know, Londis and uh, Jalen Hill, and, uh, you know, Victor needs to get some minutes. Uh, probably that, you know, those guys uh, coming off the bench, you know. Appreciate it, Lon. Yep, thank you. Next, we'll go to Eric Bailey of the Tulsa World. On kind of following up on that, what what day did Davion test positive? Was it as soon as you arrived, or was it one of the first tests? It, it was. Uh, you know, you, you, you tested when we landed uh, Monday evening. Uh, uh, then we got the results back Tuesday. Then they, you know, in, in Davion's case, they'll retest in case it was a false positive. Um, it wasn't, and uh, so we really found out yesterday that uh, he'll definitely not be with us. I'd ask you also uh, about Drew Smith, just his ability for Missouri to control a game, both offensively and defensively. What are your thoughts on him? And can you just talk about the matchup, him and Austin, both are team leaders and, and kind of guide their teams? Yeah, he's terrific. Drew uh, Smith is a guy that can score in a lot of different ways, uh, shooting the ball well. He, he gets to the paint, uh, good defender, uh, looks like a terrific leader uh, for, for them. Uh, a lot of similarities, I guess, uh, as he compared uh, him, uh, Drew, with Austin. Uh, both really good players and uh, both uh, uh, really big keys for the ball club. And lastly, just how close is your team to playing a 40-minute game? You know, you value, you kind of emphasize valuing every possession all year long. How big is that in this game? Hey, come tournament time, everything's magnified a little bit, and it's certainly big in, in this occasion. We've not... Uh, had the 40 minutes that we that we want to have. Uh, this would be a good time for it. Uh, we've had good stretches in ball games, offensively. Uh, you know, other stretches where we haven't been as consistently good. So we've got a lot of work to do uh, in terms of focus and 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 locking in and uh, really treating each possession like it's uh, the most important one. Lon, thanks. Good luck this week. You bet. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Josh Calway of Sooners Wire. 
Elon, um, just I, I guess just the daily on news is just kind of washing over. Just I guess how did the team react to that? And I assume everybody's going to try to pick it up for him and try to get him back. And I assume if you made it to next weekend, he would be available. Well, that uh, you know you, you would assume that uh, you know given the typical ten or eleven days out from from last uh, Monday, I guess, uh, which is typical quarantine period. Um, but Davion, he's feeling fine, no symptoms, you know, nothing, nothing that would hurt him physically at this point. Uh, team disappointed for him. I mean, they're, 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 you know, they others have been through it, so they know how disappointing it is, and uh, they feel badly for him and uh, Davion you know, handling it like you'd expect. You know, very disappointed to not be playing and uh, yet, uh, you know, be there for his teammates. Next, we'll go to Jenny Carlson of the Oklahoman. Hey, Lon, uh, in light of, of Davion, the news about him, anybody else test positive or anybody else get caught in a contact trace because of his positive? No, that's a good thing. Uh, as far as the contact tracing goes, uh, the, the Indianapolis and the hotels and the transportation folks have been unbelievably organized and outstanding in, in that way. Uh, in no way we've been close <laughs> for any contact tracing. That was their objective. I think if one guy tested positive, they want to make sure it didn't go through the whole team. And uh, they've had the protocols in place and they've, they've adhered to them and uh, really demanded that the teams in a good way uh, followed them. So they've been in their own rooms. They've been uh, distancing uh, during transportation. Uh, yeah, so uh, no contact tracing uh, with Davion. Hey, I also wanted to ask you a little bit about Austin. You mentioned him a second ago, but I went back and did a little quick math. And it looks to me like when you guys win, he, his turnovers are full turnover, almost a turnover and a half less than in the games that you guys lose. He's obviously such a huge part of your team is, I mean, it's scoring is important. Everything's important, but is that turnover part of the equation? Almost the, the biggest thing for him? Certainly a, a big thing. Um, as you mentioned, uh, you know, he's uh, so significant in every way, you know, we need him to score. We need him to distribute. We need him to take care of the ball. You know, he's rebounded the ball well for us. So, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's doing as much for us as maybe any player can do for a squad. And uh, taking care of the ball and valuing the ball uh, oftentimes, you know, correlates with, with the difference between winning and losing. But, uh, but it's not just Austin, of course. But, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's been you know, hugely significant and uh, has done an outstanding job. I was going to ask you about that too. The fact that, you know, obviously in replacing Davion, you, you look at a lot of different guys to fill the void, but – is Austin a guy, too, that has to maybe elevate even a little bit more with Davion out? He would be, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, those two kind of, kind of complemented each other in, in uh, oftentimes. And, uh, and uh, yeah, Austin uh, understands that. And uh, I'm sure he'll be a big-time competitor. And I'm sure he'll be uh, fired up and, and ready to do what he can. Thanks, Lon. Yep, thank you. Next, we'll go to Ryan Chapman of SI Sooners. Hey, Lon. Um, so between Austin and Brady, both of those guys have tournament experience their freshman and sophomore years. Is there anything you can draw on with those guys? Or is this year just so much different that past tournament ex experience almost is kind of a wash? Having experience is always better than not, I, I guess. Uh, now, whether it makes as much difference in this year because of COVID, uh, hard, hard to say. But uh, I think uh, throughout the year, the older teams have had a little better understanding of what you know, the need to be flexible and versatile and, and respond to whatever you need to, given that it's kind of a day-to-day -day existence, if you will. But uh, as, as it relates to the NCAA tournament, you know, uh, you know, having gone through the Big 12, these guys understand how tough, you know, every game is going to be. And uh, I think uh, teams in, uh, in leagues like this uh, certainly battle-tested and, and uh, it, it, it been challenged uh, pretty much in every way. Next, we'll go to Garen Emig of the Tulsa World. Lon, how you doing? Garen. Um, there's going to be some who hear the news about Debbie on and, and recall that, that you guys uh, played a Kansas team that was going through some COVID issues in, in Kansas City. I, I know it's hard to even begin to know where, where these, you know, where the kids and where anyone comes in contact with a virus. But has but that thought crossed your mind at all since the news broke? Uh, not really. Uh, the thought that crossed our mind is there's no idea of where it came from. Right. So, uh, so yeah, you know, uh, 
who knows? Uh, we're certainly not, you know, uh, aware enough of uh, uh, on the medical side of it to try to determine you know, where where he might have contacted it. Fair enough. And a little bit more on Austin. He's even before uh, this news broke it was assumed he was going to have to, to play big for, for you to, to win against Missouri usually has the ball in his hands toward the end of games, usually takes it upon himself to try to, uh, to make big plays. And I know you like that mentality in a kid. It also sets up sort of a hit or miss situation. And it, you saw both sides of that for Austin and, and Kansas city. A or are you in fact comfortable with, with how much control he takes of your offense down the stretch of games and, and B is it a sort of a pre- precarious position for a young guy to take? It, it, it kind of goes with the territory when you're when you're a guy that's uh, in that role, uh, and and every team's got one, maybe two, uh, if you're lucky, that is going to have the ball late game situation. They're not necessarily where they shoot it, but they may, you know, they're going to be the guy that determines, uh, you know, success. And um, when you're in that role, you're gonna you're gonna miss several times in terms of winning the game. Um, you know, and we've we've been on both sides of it. You know, we won five or six, just like the five or six that we lost. In uh, in February, late February, we won those five or six earlier, and uh, and oftentimes uh, it falls on the quarterback in football, it falls on the point guard in basketball, it falls on a key guy on every team, and uh, that's you know not many people like that role, and those that do, and Austin does, uh, you know they're going to step up and own it own it either way, and to Austin's credit, uh, he's he's battled every time. Thank you so much, Lon. You bet. Next, we'll go to Joe Bettner of the Norman Transcript. Joe. Hey, Lon. I was just going to ask you a little bit more about the um, the experience of just kind of having, like, you know, structured outside time, it, it seems like, but uh, just kind of the added mental strain that – I think you're cutting out there, Joe. All right, Joe, we might, we might try and come back to you later if uh, we get that resolved. In the meantime, let's go to uh, Gabe DeArmond for – I'm sorry, Gabe, you didn't have a question. You just needed recording. Um, let's go to Barry Trammell, the Oklahoman. And Tram, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Yeah, Lon, in January, you lost Brady for a week or 10 days to the – to. Uh, uh, COVID protocols, and that's when Elijah started playing more, and you sort of transformed your t- team, almost became much more of a defensive-minded team. Um, with Davion having to sit out, could the same thing happen? Uh, playing people like Jalen or Londis Moore, could could that sort of uh, – it's going to hurt you offensively, it seems like, but could it defensively sort of give you a spark? It'll be, uh, you know, we, we may have a little more size out there defensively, but Davion, he's pretty, he's pretty solid defensively as well. You know, he, he works hard with his ball pressure out front and, and uh, pretty physical uh, defender. Uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, Jalen and, and Alonis both, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, you know Jalen especially has got that feel for, you know, uh, instinct, you know, defensively he's really, really sound. Um uh, but again, I don't know if there's going to be, you know, we'd, we'd rather have Davion than not. That, that's for sure. But uh, we will have more size on the floor now. Thanks. Um, I can still see people moving. <laughs> I think Ben may be locked up, Lon. I, if you All right. I'm going to ask the question that Joe, Joe just texted me his question. Uh, He wanted to know about just the similarities you found in uh, from diving deeper into Missouri, if there's any, and uh, how much you like this matchup with the Tigers. They're they're very much like a big 12 team. Uh, They're very uh, physical defensively. Uh, They've uh, got good guard play. They've got uh, the big guy inside that you have give it extra attention to. Uh, So I think they would be very similar to, you know, a lot of the teams in the Big 12. So in, in that light, you know, we, we're going in, understanding how tough it's going to be. It's uh, eight, nine games, so those are always expected to be tough. So uh, no surprises for, for our guys. They know what lies ahead, and, uh, and it's going to be a tough battle. 
while waiting for Ben, I also want to ask you about Sherry Cole and her announcement today. Just your thought on Sherry, what she's meant to the Oklahoma Athletics Department. Yeah, she's been she's been unbelievably great. Uh, you think about uh, where it was at when she arrived 25 years ago, and uh, what she's done with the program and uh, direction. Uh, it's just unbelievable uh, all that she accomplished, and uh, just couldn't be happier for her. She's uh, you know, got a lot of uh, exciting things, I'm sure, in the future. But uh, I know she uh, loved what she did and uh, did it great, and affected a lot of young people in it usually positive ways. So uh, again, just a lot of respect for Sherry and, and uh, the program and, and all that she accomplished and uh, couldn't be happier for her and wishing her the very best going forward. All right, thanks so much. I'll turn the moderator duties back to Ben. All right. Thanks, Eric. Battling some uh, hotel Wi-Fi issues over here. Uh, Coach, that's, that's it for your 15 minutes. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll have uh, Austin Reeves joining us next. If you guys have a question for Austin, you can